three, you feel me? So, uh, perfect day. This supposed to be a blackout day. We're supposed to be resisting, you know what I'm saying? The 4th of July and everything that it stands for because we know what our ancestors were doing around this time and, you know what I'm saying, in 1776. So I, I'm, I'm just going to bring to y'all, you know, some updated history that too many of our, you know what I'm saying, brothers and sisters might not know about, you feel me? Because, you know, we always get this one-sided narrative of our story during the Revolutionary War, during the periods and times of the 1700s, you feel me, when the um, when the 13 colonies and the British and, you know, some of their offsprings, you know what I'm saying, decided that they no longer wanted to be a part of the 13 colonies and the British Empire, decided that they wanted to spark their own uh, so-called insurrection or revolt, you know what I'm saying? So-called revolution, but we call it counter-revolution because, you know, they always like to, you know, how can I put it? They like to, you know, uh, control the narrative of the history of that point and period in time that we know is not the correct history. So that's why it's our duty as, you know what I'm saying, New African, African historical materialists to, you know, give our perspectives on what took place during that time and period of the Revolutionary War between the, the new so-called white nation, the United States of America, and their, you know what I'm saying, masters and empire that they descend from, which is the British oligarch, the British empire from which the U.S. white nation came from. Um, so I just wanted to hop on here real quick. To give some more, you know, saying great history that a lot of our brothers and sisters might not know about because we always get this one sided story. Um, let me just go ahead and spark it off by quoting one of our great revolutionary black nationalists of that time and period that would later come on, you know, would later come in that time and period. He wasn't probably, he, I don't think he was born yet in 1776, but you know what I'm saying, y decades later, you know what I'm saying, this great brother, this great ancestor that came along by the name of Henry. McNeil Turner. Write that name down. You might not never heard of him. He's one of our great black nationalists. You know what I'm saying? Freedom fighters of the 1800s. You know what I'm saying? Orator of the 1800s. One of the first brothers, early black nationalists, um, along with Martin Delaney, David Walker, and all these great freedom fighters from that period in time. Um, Henry McNeil Turner. Write his name down. Um, I'm going to just quote him to spark it off. He would state pertaining to the independence of the new white nation, the neo-white nation, which is the United States of America, um, and his um, father, forefather nation, the British Empire and the British nation. So during the 1776 Revolutionary War, um, but, you know, the anniversaries that would later come, you know, later when... Um, Henry McNeil Turner came on the scene as a great revolutionary black nationalist. Um, he quoted and was saying that they made a flag and threw it up into the heavens, bid it float forever, but every star in it was against us. Let me say that again. They made a flag, threw it up to the heavens and bid it float forever, but every star in it was against us. Powerful. Powerful. Powerful prophecy. Powerful message from the great Henry McNeil Turner. Uh, one of these great brothers that they like to keep suppressed in our story. That they don't want us brothers and sisters to know about. Which is our resistant brothers. Our brothers who use, you know what I'm saying, the science of revolutionary black nationalism. One of those great brothers. This brother said when they made the flag, they threw the, he the flag up into the heavens. Bid that it would float forever. But every star on that flag was against new Africans. Was against Africans. Were, was against misnomer African Americans. Black brothers and sisters and children. Every star on the flag was against us. What was he saying? What was Henry McNeil Turner saying? This is what makes him a prophet in his own right. Because in 2020, those same 50 stars on that flag is still against African, new African people today. Because nothing has changed. 
Nothing has changed. All 50 stars on that flag, red, white, and blue, is still against new Africans and African people globally. Imperialism. U.S. imperialism is against black, brown, and every oppressed people still today. But I'm talking about my brothers and sisters, the new African in North America. Those 50 stars on that flag is still against us today. Facts. Today. And I just want my brothers and sisters to understand that. Are you African? Are you Americans? Or are you Africans? Which one are you? Because when we go back and look at the chronology and the historical materialism of our story and the history of this nation and what it was founded on, capitalism, imperialism, genocide, looting, murder, violence. That's what the red, white, and blue flag represents. So what are you Africans? What are you? What are you? Because the harsh, reality, the harsh reality of it all is that you are a nation within a nation. You have to understand that. You have to understand you are a nation of peoples that has a human right to be a nation of peoples and has always fought to be a nation of peoples since we were brought here as political prisoners and prisoners of war. You have always been a nation of peoples. Peoples, you are a nation. Period. And your captors, your oppressors know that. This is why they came up with the pseudo second, you know, the pseudo 13th, 14th, 15th paper citizenship that you're truly not a part of. Because like Henry McNeil Turner stated, the stars on the creation of the American flag of independence of 1776 were against you. Because in that period of time, what were you? You were laborers. You were captives on plantations, laboring, building up wealth off resources of, off the land, agriculture for a white nation. Two white nations at that point in time, which was the British Empire and the American Empire. Don't let it confuse you. The Revolutionary War wasn't just over some offsprings of the British Empire and their ancestors who just decided one day we're going to wake up and say we don't want to be no longer a part of the British nations or the 13 colonies. No, that war was over black bodies as well. That Revolutionary War was over black bodies bodies as well because they wanted the land they wanted the land and they wanted the most important thing of it all they wanted the black bodies that work the land and then in this period in time you had a third white nation that was developing off the labor of africans and new africans the confederate white nation was developing in the deep south so you had three white nationalist nations that have throughout history, whether it's the Revolutionary War or the Civil War, was over land and black bodies. Land and black bodies. And the most important thing of it all, don't let it get... Confused in the midst of all of this. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and construct. Let me go ahead and deconstruct and reconstruct our story through historical materialism on what Africans were doing while three white nations, whether we can take it from the chronology of the Revolutionary War to the Civil War, but we're gonna deal with the Revolutionary War today, which a lot of you, I hope not, is not celebrating. Because we have to get in our mind. We must detach ourselves from all colonial domination period whether it's through symbolism holidays their flags their culture their economic system their political reality we must detach from that because we have our own 
story, our own reality, our own nation, our own nationality, our own political, economic, social, cultural way of doing things as being a nation inside a nation, period. So let me go ahead and go back and tell you what your ancestor was doing. Now, every year 4th of July come around, right? 17, 17, the celebration of 1776, this great imperialistic power comes into existence. What were Africans doing in this, in this period of time of 1776? That we must make sure that our babies know this. I do these videos to make sure our babies know the correct history. I teach it to the adults so the adults can pass it down to their babies because we can't keep passing down colonial domination history to our babies because all you're doing is re-enslaving them. That's all you're doing. You're just re-enslaving them. Generational slavery is real. Generational slavery is real. So let's put the let's put out the proper construct of what we were doing in 1776. Why these two colonial settlers, the father and the offspring, were fighting over the land and black bodies that they did not value. They did not value black bodies. They just wanted the black bodies labor, the work. Period. And to murder and genocide you like they're doing in 2020. Still. Now, let me answer the question. What were we doing? Were Africans enslaved in 1776? Yes. 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 1776 Africans were still in slavery. One reason why we should never celebrate the 4th of July. We should never, ever celebrate the 4th of July. Because you was not included in that decision or that total uh, process of independence, except for being used in the tactical aspect of their independence, which is military. That's about it. That's about it. They use you for labor. They use you for military because they know Africans were naturally, scientifically military people when they kidnapped you. When they kidnapped you. When they kidnapped you, you were already military, liberated ways of people. Tribal war people. You were already military. So they use you for your labor and your military. Period. And I'm only saying that, and I'm only saying that because you got Afro, you have Pseudo African American Negroes who always want to try to use Africans or new Africans who participated in the Revolutionary War or the Civil War as some kind of special privilege to being American or being pseudo African American. They always want to try, oh, yeah, but we fought for the Revolutionary War, we fought in the Civil War. That makes us Americans. No, it fucking don't. No, it don't. That don't make you American. How does being used make you a citizen? How does being used make you a citizen of your oppressor's nation? How? You were used. Your ancestors were fucking used. That's the only reason they brought us here. To be used. And the ones they captured on the land pre-colonial invasion, the melanated people who were here before that, you feel me? You feel me? They were all used. We were all used. Black and brown, native, indigenous, whatever you want to call it. You were used. You were never part of the process of being included. Inclusion wasn't a part of what they were trying to build in the Western Hemisphere. Africans was not a part of that objective, period. Period. At all. Period. So, that brings me to my point 
of what we were doing in 1776. I said we were enslaved. That is facts. We were enslaved. We're enslaved peoples today. The shit they celebrating today. Now let's discuss the activity of certain Arabs. There were also, let me throw this in there before I move to this aspect. There were also Africans who were here, who had land, who labored all their life to get land. And there were Africans who worked their life off to death, not even death, but worked their lives off to pay for their freedom. We must overstand that reality also. Because this, because overstanding that you did have Africans who actually bought their freedom, which was still not really even a real reality of freedom, just because you bought your freedom and you may went north, you still were being oppressed up north in the industrial cities. You were being oppressed. They had slavery in the north as well. You got to understand there's different material realities of slavery. Just because these Africans bought their freedom, they still wasn't equal to the white man or the white woman in the industrial north. Period. They wasn't equal to them. And even some of the blacks that bought their freedom in the south, we know how they were being treated. They were they were capturing these people and re-enslaving these people. They even tried to recapture Africans from the north and re-enslave them. They were... Northern, you know what I'm talking about from the movie. They captured him and brought him back to Virginia and enslaved him. So yes, there were free, there were free blacks in this period of time, but this, this is not what this video is about. This is about our brothers and sisters who, who gave their ultimate sacrifice in their lives for true freedom, sovereignty, independence, and nationhood. The resistant African, the maroon. Which moves me into the, 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 the important part of this video. The legacy of resistance of Africans during the Revolutionary War of 1776. Guess what, Africans? You Guess what you were doing in 1776, Africans? You were maroon military soldiers putting down military campaigns to defend your autonomy, your self-governance in a great space and time called the Dismo Swamps. How about that? The Dismo Swamp was liberated land in 1700s by Africans. By Africans. The Great Dismo Swamp stretched from Virginia to the North Carolina border. I know what I, I'm a maroon. It's in my blood. I'm resistant. I don't go with the norm. I don't go with the commerciality of our history. No, we came into existence as descendants of resistant military maroonage Africans. Gula Geechee Africans. Period. Your blood is dripping and pumping through your veins with resistance. You are a maroon descendant. I'm a maroon descendant of the Igbo people. I'm a maroon descendant of the Igbo people and several other ethnic, ethnic groups that created the new African, the new African nation. We are our ancestors indeed, but I am my ancestors who fought back, shot back, died, sacrificed their lives to get back to what they truly had. In 1776, there were Africans all through the South fighting back for their own autonomy, their own independence. How about that? How many of you know that? You wasn't just sitting around in 1776 getting whooped, smacked upside the head, raped. Guess what your ancestors were doing? Maroonage strategies. Black women, African women, new African women. Guess what you were doing in 1776? On plantations of the South, Virginia to Texas. In Virginia, guess what you was doing, new African woman? You were poisoning your fucking master. 
You were putting down military strategies. You were sickening the fucking slave master. You were killing the slave master, black woman. All house slaves wasn't house niggas. Let me say that again. All house enslaved, captured, political prisoners of war was not sell out house niggas. Not all of them. A good majority of them was, was house niggas sellouts, but not all of them. We had resistant African maroons inside the plantation house putting down strategies for liberation and freedom. Guess what, black woman? You were using all types of African traditional rituals to kill his ass, to kill the slave master, to kill the, the, the mistress, to kill the white woman. To kill the wife of the slave master. You were poisoning his food. You were putting African herbals in his food. You were using African um, spiritual traditional voodoo. Obia. On your fucking masters. You were, you were killing their asses. Militarily inside the house in 1776, man. That's what you were doing, man. Black woman. That's what you were doing inside the house. The plantation house. And I love you black woman. New African woman. Because you put it down inside the house. You might not know this story. But you need to go find out the story. Several Ebos. Let me throw this in here. Several Ebos. Several Ebo people. Sparked off. Uh, slave rebellions. And slave insurrectionaries. Inside the plantation house. Through medical herbs or herbal strategies of warfare by poisoning their food. Yes, you did. You wasn't just sitting around in 1776 getting your ass whooped. No, you wasn't. Black woman, you wasn't just sitting around getting raped in 1776. No, you wasn't. You were killing their asses inside the house. Whether you were stabbing their ass, shooting their ass, poisoning their ass, you did everything like Malcolm X said by any means necessary to get your African freedom back inside that plantation house and on those plantations. But we taking it to the swamps. We taking it to the swamps. We taking it to the Great Dismal Swamp. Where the Maroons of Virginia, where the Maroons of Virginia had self-governance and self-autonomy on their own land in the swamps. Nobody bothered these Africans, whether you want to call them fugitive slaves, which I do not like using that terminology. I don't I don't call my ancestors fugitives because what the hell is criminal about killing and murdering for freedom of a person that's captured and enslaved? What is criminal about that? There's nothing criminal about fighting for fucking freedom. It's a human right. So these are freedom fighters. I don't call them food. I don't call them fugitive slaves. These were freedom fighters escaping the slave plantations to the maroon dismal swamps where they gained their, they took their independence. They took their freedom and no longer wanted to be a part of the oppressor. In his 13 colonies, whether it was the white nationalist nation of America or the white nationalist nation of Britain of the 13 colonies and later on what would develop out of that, the Confederate States of the fucking South. These Maroons wanted no part of that. No part of that. No part of that. No part of that. Leading up to the... When we get into the period of the Revolutionary War, when the Revolutionary War started to spark sometime between the early 1700s, I mean the early 1770s, right? Another trickery to try to take these dismal swamps, Maroons' autonomy, the trickery of the colonial settler was they tried to recruit Maroons out of the great dismal swamp to join their armies to try to defeat one another. The United States of America tried to recruit Maroons out of the dismal swamp. The British tried to recruit Maroons out of the dismal swamp. So this put the Maroons in a tricky situation. 
This put the Maroons in a tricky situation. But being that the military-minded Maroons they are and the self-governing nationalist Maroons that they are as Africans, New Africans, they had to really come up with a plan. They had to come up with a plan because the number one objective was to defend their autonomy, their self-governance on the great dismal swamp land that they declared as an independent settlement state in Virginia for New Africans and Africans and all oppressed people who wanted to live in this land in harmonious freedom that they say in the Constitution, harmonious freedom. These Maroons had to come up with a plan, brothers and sisters. They already knew what the Americans was trying to do. They knew what the British were trying to do, trying to use them, trying to use them by selling them false hope of freedom, Selling them false hope of freedom. Just like the Americans did with the 13th Amendment, the 14th Amendment, and the 15th Amendment. Sell us false pseudo hopes of freedom. The Maroons quickly realized that we're going to use y'all instead of you using us. So you got to understand when they say, or Negroes, or anybody try to use the excuse that, oh, Africans fought in the Revolutionary War. Africans fought in the Civil War. So when these cats try to come up with these pseudo history, revised histories of a straight colonial subject history, you got to smack them back with the truth. Like, look here, brother or sister. These Maroons were not fighting to be a part of the plantation. They were fighting to get off the plantation. That they had already got off. Because the Maroons were already off the plantation in the deep, in the great dismal swamps of Virginia and North Carolina. They were already off the plantation. Already off the plantation. So when the British and the Americans tried to propose to the Maroons that look here, you got, join us and we're going to give you false hope of freedom or the British Join us. We're going to give you false hope of freedom. The Maroons like, look here. No, we're going to defend our autonomy through the through fighting in y'all war. Yeah, we'll participate in your war. But the whole time, the American and the British didn't realize that the only reason the Maroons even, you know, participated in the Revolutionary War was to defend their autonomy, to defend their autonomy, to defend their independence. To protect their land and settlements in the Great Dismal Swamp as a nation of people. That's the only reason they participated. Not to become American. Not to become part of the British colony. No longer to want to remain on the deep plantation. White nationalist nation that would come into existence later. The Confederate States of America. No, the Maroons made up in their mind like, no, we're going to plant, plot, strategize to defend our land, our autonomy through your wars. Or by any means necessary to get back to Africa. If they would, if they could find the opportunity to get back to Africa. That's the only reason these Maroons participated in these military campaigns, man. Period. They volunteered because they were strategically setting up self-defense mechanisms to defend the great dismal nation, the great dismal swamp nation. This is what they were doing. This is why they participated. So when you hear African Negroes or white um, racist historians say that blacks participated in the Revolutionary War. You G check them from the gate and you let them know. No, they didn't put really participate in it. They didn't really participate in it because they wasn't fighting for either one of y'all. They were fighting for black freedom. They were fighting for black self-determination. They were fighting for land. So when you hear anything about an African participating in American wars, the Civil War and the Revolutionary War, you let them know they were fighting for black self-determination. They were fighting for black independence. They were fighting for the land, not to be a part of their 
uh, whatever they were trying to bring into existence as an objective, whether it's the American nation or to keep the 13 colonies of the British Empire intact. No, that's not what they were fighting for. That's not what they were fighting for, people. We must, we must understand the, the complete truth and the complete narrative of our story. This is why it's important for us to control our story. Research your story. Look for the truth inside of his story to find our story of resistance. We have a legacy of resistance in America. We have a legacy of resistance in America because by the human rights, by the human rights of a human, we are entitled to self-determination, nationality, nationhood, and freedom by any means necessary. Period. So in 1776, in 1776, Maroons and other enslaved peoples throughout the South were putting down military campaigns during 1776. Teach your babies that. Don't keep teaching your babies that you were just sitting on a plantation getting smacked upside the head, getting beat down with whips, getting killed, hung, castrated, raped. All these things are true, but guess what you were doing in the majority as Gula Africans and Maroons? You were fighting back. You were shooting back. You were strategizing, murdering, killing to defend your dignity with African blood for African freedom, African sovereignty, period. That's our story. That's my ancestor's story. Yes, many of us were victims. Many of us was victims to white terrorism. Yes, a lot of us were murdered. Yes, we were. A lot of our babies were killed. Yes, they were. A lot of our women were raped. Yes, they were. But being in a dual reality and understanding the science of duality, the yin and the yang and the dialectical reality of our material world, everything they did to us, we did it back. Everything they did to us, we did it back. Nat Turner. Denmark Vesey, Charles Desalon, Gabriel Prosser, everything they did, Ann Woods, how many of you know who Ann Woods is? The outlaw of Virginia, Ann Woods, Ann Woods, outlaw. If they raped our woman, our woman killed one of them. It's just like the gang mentality of, that, of today, of the Crips and the Bloods, the Vice Lords, the Black Disciples. You take one of us, you do something to one of us, you take one of us, we did it back to them. Where's that science today? Where's that science today? When they take one of us, we take one of theirs. Get hip to the strategies of war. Get hip to Get hip to the secrets of war, people. Get hip to the secrets of war. It's the secrets of war. You take one of ours, we take one of yours. Trust me, black woman, you were putting in work, African woman, you were putting in work on these colonial settlers, man. You wasn't just sitting there getting raped. Yes, they took advantage of a lot of our sisters. They took a lot, they took advantage of a lot of our queens. But a lot of those queens put in pure retribution, pure revenge, retaliation, and get back and came back and got their asses. Got them. Murdered them. Took them out of existence. You have to understand African people. No matter where you be, even my even my brothers and sisters on the continent and my brothers and sisters all across the diaspora, you have to understand when they take one of yours, you have to take one of theirs. Power only respects power. This is the maroon mentality. This is what the maroons are. You make power respect 
power. That's the only thing these devils know is power. Respects power. We are the power. We are the power. We're freedom fighters by natural science. We are freedom fighters by natural science and design of our creators. The black woman and the black man. We are natural freedom fighters by scientific nature. Period. We're maroons. So overstand this, brothers and sisters. In 1776, we wasn't just enslaved laborers. Put that in your mind. Embed that in your mind to teach to the babies. We wasn't just enslaved laborers and political prisoners of war in this period and context. You were freedom fighters. You were freedom fighters. You were revolutionary nationalists. You had your own land. The Great Dismal Swamp was a national settlement of free Africans who escaped the plantation as political prisoners of war and became a national people on their own right. They took their freedom. They took their national identity. They took their sovereignty and they fought, defended it by any means. I'm a great dismal swamp maroon. I'm from Virginia. It's in my blood to resist the oppressor. It's in my blood to resist America. I resist everything America's ever, ever brought into existence against my people. I resist it. I don't like none. I don't like your flag. I don't like your flags. I don't like your system. I don't like your politicians. I don't like nothing about America. The only thing I like anything remotely about America and the United States of America is that my ancestors built this bitch. My ancestors built this bitch. That's the only thing I... My ancestors built the United States of America. Period. That labor, that agriculture, the metal industry, the industrialization of America, the infrastructure of America, the economy of America was built on the back of African ancestors. Period. So we have the right and entitlement to any piece of this land we want. As granted by the indigenous nations. I love you indigenous people. I love our ancestors of the indigenous nations. And the Chicano nations. The indigenous Chicano nations as well. I love you brothers and sisters. However we entitled to the land. Because we built the land, we buried our dead on this land, Issei. Issei, Africans are buried on this American land, so it's our land too, period. We fought over it, we bled over it, we died for it, we built it, it's ours. And we don't have to be American citizens to that entitlement. It was yours before they forced you to be Americans. It was yours before they forced you to be Americans. Period. The land was yours before they forced you to be Americans. This is why you bled for it. You died for it. You put in retribution for it. You sacrificed your lives for it. You die in the fields for it. You paid for it. Our ancestors, that's right, Packy. That's, that's right, Packy. Our ancestors, because even brothers and sisters on the continent, this was your, 
this was your ancestors that built America. By our friends, this was your ancestors. Your ancestors built America. Your ancestors built America. And they also fought on this land for Africa. This is something else they left out. Because you want to know why they fought for Africa? Because they were fighting to get back to Africa. Every slave rebellion, every slave insurrection, revolt, were uprising, whatever you want to label it, was either for the land that the ancestors were buried on here or to get back to the land that they came from. Free the land. Free the land. And before I close off, another another period, another period that you have to study, or, or should I say, a specific individual that you have to study around that point and period of time of 1775 to 1776 was the governor named Lord Dunmore. Who was who, who was Lord Dunmore? Lord Dunmore was the governor of the Virginia Royal Regiment of the British Empire. Write that down. Lord Dunmore. Because if you study Lord Dunmore, then you will understand a lot of things that I'm telling you about the Maroons. Because out of the Maroons came the, the army and the regiment that was all new African, all black, that was a part of the British uh, army, but they wasn't fighting for the British, so let's put that in there. Because I don't want none of my brothers and sisters outside of America to get a few confused that Africans was fighting for the British. No, they joined the British regiment in order to defend the Great Dismal Swamp from the British Empire and the American Empire. And out of this group became the Ethiopian Regiment. Write that down. They called themselves the Ethiopian Regiment. These were Maroons that came out of the Dismal Swamp. And they called themselves the Ethiopian Regiment. They composed of runaway Maroons and runaway African ancestors who left the plantations from other states, Kentucky, um, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Maryland, uh, in that Pacific Upper South region. These were runaways, man. Runaway Africans who ran to the Dismal Swamp. And they joined the Maroons and then the Maroons um, participated with the British Empire in order to defend their autonomy, to defend the great dismal swamp nation in the swamp because they didn't want the British or America to invade their autonomy because they knew they had their own land, they had their own governance, they had their own food, they had their own everything, independence in the dismal swamp. So this was a, this was a strategic military campaign to defend their autonomy in this dismal swamp. So write that down. The all Ethiopian regiment was like over 800, 800 Africans, Maroons who had escaped upper South plantations to join this Maroon regiment and military group to participate in the revolutionary war to defend the great dismal swamp from both oppressors, from broke, from both white nationalist nations. How about that? That's great history. That's not passive history. That shows that we wasn't passive people. That shows that we were people that were in our right African mind to fight for what we truly had before they captured us as political prisoners of war. We want our self-autonomy, independence, sovereignty, rights as a human beings on this place and in this time by any means necessary. Baba El Haj Malik Shabazz. Period. In the end, in closing, in the end, in closing, ultimately, ultimately, Lord Dunmar and the British Regiment of the Virginia Royal Regiment was defeated. The Ethiopian Regiment was defeated by night by 1776 which is what you have today is the great hell day of the 4th of July that doesn't pertain to black people that 
doesn't pertain to the new African. That doesn't pertain to the misnomered African-American. July 4th, 1776 is not your independence. Juneteenth. 1865 is not your Independence Day. We are still looking for our Independence Day. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. We have the flag. We have the flag. We have the structure of the government body. But we have not liberated the land yet. So we don't have independence yet. Because we have not liberated no land yet. But we have spent 300 years to 400 years in America fighting to liberate the land. That's our story. Integration is not our story. Separation is our story. Liberating the land is our story. We are here to liberate the land. Your ancestors died for it. And, and, and sacrifice themselves to liberate the land. Not to just vote. Not to just vote. Tell that side of the story. Negroes. Negro African American. Tell that side of the story. Tell that side of the story about the Africans who died to liberate the land. We're land liberationists. What are you talking about? Your ancestors were land liberationists. What are you talking about? They died for the land. They died for their people. They died for the blood. The red, black, and green. They didn't die just to vote. Actually, 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 you are demeaning our struggle when you say they died to just to vote. You are demeaning your ancestors, whether it's directly or indirectly. Because you're talking about maroons now. You're talking about maroons. Watch how you talk about maroons. Get to know the story about maroons. So when the English Navy evacuated, which is the British Empire, after they lost the Revolutionary War, what would become the United States within its ships and listen to what the United States, a lot of you people who always try to protect the United States and say the United States was for us, whether it's the Revolutionary War or the Civil War, you need to go back and get the correct history. They were the biggest oppressors outside of the British Empire and the Confederate States of America, the North. The North was some of the biggest enslavers, period. The North, the ones you, you, you smiling in their face with the red, with the white, red and blue flag. The blue, red, and white flag. The ones, um, faces you smiling in were some of the biggest enslavers of Africans. It wasn't just the South. It wasn't just the South. The Northerners were no different than their brothers in the South. Facts. And listen to what they said. So when the English Navy evacuated, what would become the United States within its ships were hundreds of Maroons and their families who were transported to English controlled islands in the Caribbean and in Canada today. You can find their descendants in places like Nova Scotia and the Bahamas, of course. Although their cause was not successful outside of the dismal swamp, the surging Maroons absolutely had no intentions of becoming slaves. Let me say that one more time before I get off of here. Today you can find you today you can find these descendants of Maroons in the Caribbean, in Canada, in places like Nova Scotia, Scotia and the Bahamas. And of course, although their cause was not successful outside of the dismal swamp, the surging Maroons absolutely had no intentions of becoming slaves, free to land. Free the land. Free the land. Those are my ancestors. I don't know what your ancestors were. My ancestors were refused to become slaves. They refused to stay slaves. That's what they were doing in 1776. That's what they were doing in 1776. 4th of July. 4th of July. 
And you best believe in closing. You best believe on the 4th of July, 1776, somewhere in the South, somewhere in some of these um, states of slavery, there was a slave rebellion taking place on the 4th of July in 1776 somewhere. There was an ancestor somewhere, a woman, a man, a child who were plotting, planning, strategizing, and even initiating a slave revolt on this day. Because you got to understand, there were so many slave revolts, so many slave rebellions, that all of them wasn't recorded. And a lot of the recordings were erased out of history. The documents were destroyed. So you better believe somewhere on this, in this empire, on 4th of July, 1776, there were resistant Africans and resistant Maroons putting down um, slave rebellions, uprising, and revolts on 4th of July. They wasn't just sitting around on a plantation, getting their ass whooped, and then doing hard labor on this day. No, our legacy is resistance. Our legacy is resistance. Our legacy is resistance. Your legacy is resistance. Because what you do today, what you do today, what you do today is a part of your legacy. And I hope part of your legacy is resistance because I hope and I pray that you don't want your children's children and the generations after them to be continue to be governed by white people. Period. And I'm going to sign off on that note. Be a loyal enemy. Be a loyal enemy, man. Be a loyal enemy, man. Because your enemies have faith in what you can do more than what you think you can do. Be a loyal enemy. Hockey Queen and Shark Core, man. AKA EK Chuku, man. I'm out, man. Free the land. By any means necessary. We Maroons.